Welcome everyone. Today's topic on ways restaurants can prepare for the 2021 landscape. Leading today's conversation is Ricky Dunbar, Senior Director of Partner Success at Fat Merchant. Before we get started today, a few things to know. This webinar is being recorded and you will have access following today's session. We're using the Q&A section on your screen. So if you have any questions, please put them there and we'll address them at the end of the presentation. Fat Merchant is the source of today's content. Fat Merchant is a preferred credit card processing partner of the Buyer's Edge platform. Our partnership with them offers customers of all of our brands the ability to accept credit card payment, which as we all know in these COVID days for contactless pickup, avoiding cash handling and coin shortages is pretty essential. So signing up for Fat Merchant as a customer of the Buyer's Edge platform brands allows you to choose a processor with no contract, no markup, and a vendor that is really easy to work with and will provide 24 seven real human customer support and a direct point of contact for escalating any issues that you have and lets you keep more of your money so that you can stop worrying about your credit card processor. Um, I'd now like to introduce you to our host, Ricky Dunbar. He has built his career of nearly two decades crafting successful long-term partnerships with a wide range of experience covering revenue management, financial modeling, to e-commerce sales, system integration, customer loyalty, and brand advocacy. He's forged partnerships with leading companies covering a broad spectrum of industries and verticals, and holds a degree in both economics and political science from University of Central Florida. And what I feel is the coolest thing about him is that he enjoys spending his free time learning all of life's most important skills from his wife and two young children. With that, I will turn it over to you, Ricky, to talk to us about the ways restaurants can prepare for this 2021 landscape. Well, Jen, thank you so much for the intro. That was uh, a was glowing intro, so I appreciate that. Um, and I also wanted to say thanks to all the folks at the Buyer's Edge platform for um, allowing this opportunity to uh, present to all of you folks today. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in. Um, you know, the, the largest determining factor to what 2021 is really going to look like currently, at least, is the the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, right? Pretty pretty obvious, pretty straightforward. Um, really good news, though, this week um, uh, was that uh, Pfizer and a couple other drug companies have announced that they've made some uh, really incredible progress on a vaccine. So that's that's great. That um, that news is really just a couple of days old. Um, so I'm sure most of you heard about that by now, but that is something to be very excited about for 2021. Um, there are a lot of logistical challenges that still need to be cleared. You know, there's issues with adoption, availability, um, foreign travel, and of course the the continued spread of the virus. So the bottom line is that it's not going anywhere in the foreseeable future. So having a plan in place now is going to be really crucial to your uh, business survivability going into the new year. And that's what we wanted to focus on today: is how can we best equip um, restaurant operators. And when I say restaurants, of course, I mean, you know, bars and, and all, all the stuff that kind of fits into that macro category. But how can we best be prepared for what 2021 is going to look like when there are still a lot of unknowns in the world right now? So, you know, perspective really helps. I kind of like to, to, to lay the groundwork and give you some foundation first before we really dig into, uh, into the meat of what we've prepped for, for today. Um, so let's take a quick look at some numbers um, after we've had many months now of pandemic living. Um, under our belts, and we can kind of uh, you know look back and make some sense of things. Um, first off, experts have said that about 40% of restaurants across the country um, could still close due to the pandemic. So a lot of folks are still open. I know a lot of the restaurants in my neighborhood are are still uh, they're still doing well. They're of course not as as well as they would be otherwise, but they're still open. They're still taking business. That's great. Um, but that sort of looming threat of what could happen is still there for a lot of these folks. 
<clears throat> the National Restaurant Association told us that there are about 100,000 establishments that have already closed, either permanently or indefinitely. So this is a big number. And of course, this is probably going to continue to grow. So we want to make sure that for those of you that are tuning in uh, to, this, uh, to this webinar today, that you avoid that and that you're well equipped for what 2021 has to bring. And you take all this collectively and it's ultimately going to result in about a $240 billion loss in sales before 2020 is done. Now, it's a huge industry. It's a, it's a very lucrative industry. Um, but again, these unknowns, this is important stuff and, and taking steps now is really going to be the determining factor for what success may look like for you next year. None of us, of course, can predict what that's going to be, but at least finding a path for yourself is of the utmost important at this, uh, utmost importance at this stage. I wanted to share with you something that I, I saw as I was getting ready for this um, from the uh, National Restaurant Association uh, president and CEO, Tom Bene, um, quote that he had here, which I thought was important. I'll just read to you the first part. Um, Our survival for this comes down to the creativity and entrepreneurship of owners, operators, and employers. And I think if you, if you stop there and don't read the rest, it's fine. Um, that is one of the key things here, that creativity, and that entrepreneurial spirit that's um, intrinsic in this industry, um, that is really what is helping folks survive. That, you know, the beauty of this industry is that there are so many things that you can do to surprise and delight guests. Um, and that stuff, especially today, really stands out. You know, People are talking more and more about those experiences that resonate with them and the types of things that they're, that they're seeing, feeling, um, when they go out to eat or even if they're just doing carry out and those types of things. So all the stuff we're going to talk about today, some of these things are just sort of micro level tactics that you can do, but they're, they're, they mean a lot. They mean a lot more. They, you know, you're kind of over indexing from where these things, um, you know, would have moved the needle in, in times past under different circumstances. So just bear that in mind as we go through this. So how are restaurant owners and operators surviving today and what, uh, can we take and apply from those techniques and those tactics to kind of better future-proof uh, your business? Um, so today we're going to kind of go into four different categories over the next few minutes, and those are going to cover uh, digital reservations and check-in. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what uh, contactless restaurant menus, how folks are implementing those, and, and what the feedback has been on that. Um, naturally, we're, we're a payments processor, so we're going to spend some time talking about um, how important payments are in that system. And then, of course, uh, one of my favorites, which is uh, curbside pickup, we'll spend some time digging into this as well and some best practices that you can implement if you haven't already at your restaurant. So first off, um, virtually everything is more or less, uh, virtual everything, I should say, is, is more or less a necessity at this stage. And what I mean by that is everyone is expecting the ability to be able to do things um, digitally. And really, this is all sort of hinging on mobile. So as you're, as you're taking in what I'm saying today, and as you're, uh, you know, we break from this webinar and you go out and you start exploring different technologies that can, that can help you solve some of these challenges for your, um, for your establishments, bear in mind that everything should be mobile first at this stage. Um, we, were, we were well into that trend uh, coming into 2020. You know, we had become, uh, from a global standpoint, a, a mobile first society, but what the coronavirus, the COVID pandemic really did was it catalyzed that, it accelerated that and said, okay, if you're not this today, you're probably not going to be here tomorrow. And today and tomorrow are a much shorter timeline than they might have been prior to that. So gone are the days of people just sort of walking up to the host stand, giving their name, and then waiting amongst a, a crowd of people to be seated. Um, it, during a pandemic, not only is this risky business, but the perception is that you and your staff um, are taking safety seriously and that it is critically important. So if you're doing digital reservations, that's going to stand out more. If you accept reservations, that's going to stand out more. And you certainly don't want people gathering in these large groups because others may see that and it may turn them away. They may see these large lines or just bunches of people and say, you know what, that's not really for me. I'm going to go someplace else. The likelihood of them coming back, they're always going to have that memory and you don't want to create that experience for them. Um, if you haven't already, uh, you know, research the technology that you're that's needed for you to um, accept online reservations and plan to do so again with mobile in mind. That's going to be 
know, critically important. Consumers are still out and about. It's good news. They're still out. They're still moving around. They're still traveling. Um, mobile is the current state of commerce. So just bear that in mind. Um, with that said, a virtual wait list has actually been really helpful for a lot of the restaurants that we've talked to, helping them organize reservations while giving you, the operator, the ability to send mobile alerts to the customer when their table is ready. So I remember back in the day, I, I worked in restaurants a long time ago, and we, we had the pager system. And the first thing that somebody would ask when we handed them a pager is, how far can I go with this? And we had to kind of describe, you couldn't say, well, go 100 feet or 200 feet. We had to say, well, you can go over the t-shirt store, but you know, don't go against the, the far wall in the t-shirt store because then it won't work anymore. Um, that's kind of over now. Um, everything can be done via mobile um, with uh, SMS and, and other technologies. It just makes this easier. And it's so much more convenient for the, for the guests because they can just move around and sort of, sort of do their thing freely now. And then online ordering um, or contactless menus, which we're going to cover in a minute, um, is not only entirely touch-free, but it's super convenient for guests. So what, again, and you're probably starting to notice a theme here. As you start implementing some of these touch-free technologies, there's actually a, a lot of convenience of just inherently built into these that just make for a better overall guest experience. So with online ordering, you're, you're allowing them the ability to order in advance and then dine in. It's a fantastic option. You're able to collect payment at time of ordering. So you're not running the risk of losing money with, with no-shows. And for someone like me, I have two young kids. Being able to have food ready sooner is always going to be a win. You know, we're, um, we're based in Orlando. And so we go to Disney, having two young kids, we go to Disney quite a bit. And a few years back, Disney implemented mobile ordering. And I can tell you initially, they didn't really advertise it because they were they were just you know hoping a few people would use it here and there just to test it out. But we started using it right away and it completely changed the dining experience at Disney. It went from something where we're like, should we just pack lunch because we don't want to deal with it or it's expensive to, I don't really mind how much it costs anymore because now it's so fast, so easy, so convenient. And I can do it when I'm getting off the ride. By the time I get to the restaurant, my food's already ready for me and I can put it in front of my kids and we're good to go. So this is great technology. Um, it's already out there. It existed before the pandemic. Now's a really good time to look at that and see if it's a good fit for your business. All right, contactless restaurant menus. Um, you know, as I just mentioned, uh, mobile rules the world, but perception is equally important. So I've spoken to some restaurant operators that have said that utilization of these online menus or these contactless menus has not been especially high. However, the feedback from guests that because they had them has been overwhelmingly positive. And so that's what I mean about the importance of perspective versus you know just the, the other intrinsic benefits of having this technology. Um, guests are saying that they appreciate the steps that the restaurant is taking to keep them safe. And uh, it's very clear to them that they care about providing a clean environment for them to be able to eat. Um, QR codes have kind of been the standard go-to for this sort of thing. It's very simple technology to implement. What you see in the image right here is, is it. You can literally have a QR code created. You can print it on a piece of paper or a sticker, put your branding on it, stick it down on the table or at the host stand, and you're good to go. It's literally that easy. Um, you probably don't even need to pay to have this, to be quite frank, because QR technology, QR code technology has been around for so long. Um, so do your homework on this, but this could be one of those quick and easy takeaways uh, from this webinar that you guys could do today and, and, and um, you know, score some points right away. Um, for the guests, it's great because they walk in, they order, they pay, they sit down. In, in this case, it's actually at the table. So that's another option for you. This eliminates a ton of physical touch points, and that in turn significantly reduces risk during a pandemic like we're facing now. It also, going back to perception, reinforces a, a healthy and safety conscious environment that is so important for people to see and experience today. Um, and the last, and this is just kind of a, a nice little bonus for you, is that digital menus are pretty quick and easy to update. So if you change anything on your menu, you add, you take away, you change ingredients, you add nutrition facts, whatever it may be. Um, it's a lot easier to do with a digital menu and a lot cheaper than it is if you have to go and print a whole bunch of new menus um, in the process. All right, so let's talk about payments. Um, contactless payments are something that uh, was gaining transaction before COVID kicked in, but 
as I mentioned before, COVID has really been a catalyst for this technology. That initial popularity though, pre, pre-pandemic, was due in large part to the ease and simplicity of contactless payments. So again, just like I said a minute ago, it, it all comes back to just a better guest experience. So um, there's a number of different ways that this can work. People can pay via text messaging or using touch-free devices, which is both speedy and efficient. Um, then you add in the benefit of keeping things sanitary and it's, it's a win across the board. Once an order is confirmed, you're able to send out a payment link to your guest smartphone where they can pay their check and still be able to tip their server. So as you're taking all this in, you're thinking about you know, where you can make changes in your restaurant or bar. This is a big one and one that we can most certainly help you with. And so can the, uh, the folks at, at uh, Buyer's Edge platform. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now onto one of my favorites. And I, I, I never knew how much I love this until I had to do it. And that's curbside pickup. Uh, this has been, in my opinion, you may, as operators, you may disagree, but in my opinion, as a guest, this has been one of the coolest things to happen as a result of the pandemic. Um, I was never a big fan of carryout. I, I always wanted to dine in, but then my wife and I had kids and that kind of changed our perspective on things. So we still enjoy being able to dine in. We still enjoy the uh, restaurant, uh, the, the restaurant experience, the dining room experience, um, but times have changed. And people, they, they want to enjoy the meals that you're creating for them, but they want easier and safer ways to do that. So one of the industry experts that I spoke with when I was um, you know, getting ready to speak with y'all today said that um, some of the businesses that they've been working with um, that have focused on specifically on curbside and carryout are the ones who are performing the best in their, in their portfolios or in their base of clients. Um, some of the restaurants that we've spoken with, and they were able to corroborate this, have seen their carryout segment grow by anywhere uh, from about 50 to 100%. Um, and this includes uh, restaurants that were already very heavy in carryout. So this is pretty consistent across the board. So with that, of course, there come the need for tighter controls over carryout so that you're able to keep operations running smoothly. So I'll give you a couple examples of that. Um, something that you cannot really control for is what happens when a third party service like DoorDash or Uber Eats picks up and delivers your food. Okay. Now I've, I've heard a lot of mixed opinions on, um, you know, how popular these services are amongst both, uh, guests and restaurant owners and operators. So, um, I'm sure you have your opinions here as I, as I think everybody does. But one thing I will say is that people are using it. It is important. This has been a boon to their industry and it's probably not going anywhere anytime soon. So the more things that you can do at your store to mitigate uh, what could happen after the food has been picked up between the pickup and the delivery, the better off you're going to be um, as a, a restaurant operator. Um, guests are ultimately going to hold, hold you accountable. So do, you know, do your best in this regard. Um, so things like um, ensuring that the food is packaged right so that it's ready for travel, um, doing a last minute check, having your, your expo or whoever's taking the food to the host stand, having them make sure that they're actually uh, validating against the ticket that what's in there is right. There is nothing more annoying than picking up or getting delivery, opening it up, being excited and realizing that something's wrong. Um, I ordered, um, I ordered from a taco place a couple of weeks ago. Hadn't eaten there since the pandemic started. I used to eat there about once a month. And I ordered a, a beef taco, sorry, a steak taco. And um, sorry, a steak burrito. And when I got, uh, I went and picked it up. And when I got home and opened it up, it was literally a tortilla with uh, steak on it. Nothing else. No, no, uh, no cheese. Nothing that you would expect in a burrito was there. And I'm like, how, how does something like this even happen? This doesn't make sense. And Surprise, surprise, of course, you know, we haven't been back there since and probably won't go back again. Um, another story I can share with you, and this is more in a positive light, is um, we have a few Chick-fil-A's here near us. We're in the South, so they're, they're quite common down here, but we have a few Chick-fil-A's near us. And I gotta tell you, when this whole pandemic thing kicked off and uh, there was shutdown orders and the restaurants were allowed to do carry out, Chick-fil-A was the fastest to get it right. They had it right almost immediately. Going to Chick-fil-A used to be such a hassle. If you didn't go in the dining room, just forget the drive through because it'd be wrapped around the building multiple times. The Chick-fil-A's, at least around us here in Orlando, have become the most efficient, well-oiled curbside and drive through 
services that I've ever seen in my life. I, I kind of don't want that to change, although I reckon it, you know, it will once this all blows over. Um, but anytime I'm talking to a restaurant, I reference to what I see at Chick-fil-A and I say, hey, these guys have got it figured out. They have dedicated the staff. They've dedicated the training. They've invested in the technology. They've done things in the drive-through that add convenience, putting tents over things so that the rain doesn't affect them. Just a million little things that all add up and you're in and out of there in a heartbeat and you don't have to touch a single person or be that close to a single person the entire time that you're there. Um, really, really nice protocol that they've implemented. Finally, as we mentioned before, um, perception really is everything. So having PPE on your staff that's visible demonstrates to your guests that you're taking their interest to heart and you're doing everything necessary to provide a safe dining environment for them. Um, in order to get this and everything else that we've talked about to work, you're going to need your staff bought in and you're going to need them executing at a very high level. Um, with that, the internal perception. So what does the staff think of this? Do they understand why it is you're, you're handing these directives down and you've made these new safety protocol for your, for your guests and for your staff? Making sure that internal perception is clean and understood is just as important when it comes to showing your guests that you're taking this seriously. So make sure you spend time, educate your staff, help them to understand why you're taking these precautions and tie that back into keeping them safe as well. They absolutely will appreciate it. That's another thing um, that we learned as we were talking to folks um, before sharing with you today. Um, some of our industry experts and, and uh, restaurant consultants were saying the same thing. They're saying, as long as your staff feels that you're taking good care of them, they're going to do a significantly better job and be more conscious in their safety protocol around guests. And that's super important. Keep in mind, they're there to make money. They show up to make money and take it home, but they can't do that if they're sick or if your guests think that your establishment is unsafe. Um, something else that I really like, this is a, a pretty cool technique that someone shared with me, is have your team do some of their health safety procedures visibly in the dining room. So a good example of this would be, instead of wiping down menus at the end of the night somewhere else or after the guests have left, do this now in the dining room in front of the guests so that they see that you guys are taking things seriously. Those, again, going back to what I said in the beginning, those little procedures, those things add up. You have Those have more equity now than they ever had before. Other staff will also see your staff doing this, and hopefully in the ideal world, they'll pitch in or even do the same when they have some downtime as well. And last, and this is probably one of the most important ones on this slide, is don't shy away from enforcing the rules that you put in place. You know, don't, don't be that place that puts things on paper, sticks it on a bulletin board, and then just kind of forgets about it and, and doesn't do it. And that carries through even to your guests. So if you have guests who are health conscious, and I, I promise all of you do at this stage, seeing other guests in the dining room, ignoring safety protocol, you know, not following mask guidelines if you have them, or just you know, otherwise just being irresponsible when it comes to stuff like this, this is going to reflect on you. They're not gonna look at that person and, and solely place the blame on them. They're going to say, why is this restaurant allowing this person to be in here? that having one person or two people or whatever that aren't taking these safety measures seriously essentially kind of undoes all of the other things you're doing, right? And, and you're investing too much time, too much energy, and too many dollars into that stuff um, to just have, you know, a couple people show up and not wear their masks or wear them incorrectly and, and kind of have that all wash away. So don't hold back, enforce the rules, hold your guests accountable. You can do this respectfully, but it is going to be um, super important. Now, as we mentioned, contactless is, is really the hottest item right now, and it's not likely to change in the near future. So the sooner and the more fully that you embrace contactless as a, as a methodology, but also from a technology standpoint, um, the sooner it's going to yield dividends for your business, whether that's 2021 or, or even beyond. I go back to my Chick-fil-A story. I kind of wish they would just keep doing drive-through like they are today. Uh, maybe they will, maybe they won't. I don't know. Um, but enacting the strategies that we've uh, outlined uh, thus far can certainly impact the bottom line for your business. You know, at Fat Merchant, something that we focused on is giving you options while avoiding uh, a full restructure or overhaul of any of your current processes. This helps contribute to those savings, and that's really important. 
Um, the process of adding contactless payment options usually requires your business to either have to purchase additional costly products, and a lot of times that comes through multiple providers, which can be frustrating. In the current climate, you don't really want to have to do that because um, that's a lot of money going in a lot of places, and a lot of times it's not all necessary. Um, and you also may end up getting things that don't really fit too well with your business strategy. So be sure to take the time and do the research, whether you go with us or someone else, just spend time, do research, ask questions, ask hard questions and, and press the folks that you're talking to, to answer your questions to your satisfaction. Um, being able to add things like our virtual terminal, um, that comes uh, built in with contactless payment tools. It's super affordable, gives your business the ability to very easily adapt to this contact-free environment that we've discussed. Um, and some of the features that it includes are like text to pay online ordering, stuff that's just built in right away, instant online shopping carts. A lot of times this can require full website revamps, but the way we've built this is it's super cost effective to just make all of that significantly easier for you to implement. And I'll leave you with this before we move into, into um, questions and answers, but when paying for either low cost or high cost items, so those low end or high end items, consumers are primarily choosing to use their credit cards, um, about 60% on the low cost end, about 90% on the high cost end. So as you're taking everything in that I've shared with you today, you're, you're, you're delving into adding more technology forward options like what we've discussed, keep in mind, Consumers are going to continue to drive, um, uh, are going to continue wanting to be able to get delivery options, online ordering apps, and things like that. All of those things come with an increase in credit card usage, and that's just going to continue on into the future. That is one thing I can definitively say will happen in 2021, pandemic or otherwise. More and more people are going to be looking for easier, more convenient ways to pay, and that ultimately comes back to, um, to credit cards. So keep that in mind, be ready, be equipped for those types of things, and also be sure to take a look at your statements and understand your fees. That stuff is super important as you're starting to accept more and more, um, more and more credit cards. So with that, I'm gonna wrap up and we can go ahead and start que uh, taking questions. I wanted to say thank you all so much for your time and I sincerely hope that this has been helpful for you. Ricky, thank you so much. That was such fantastic and insightful content. Um, we do have a few great questions that came through during the presentation for you. Uh, the first one is actually, what contactless payment option does that merchant provide? Sure, yeah, thanks for that question. Um, a few different things, and again, I'm gonna rattle off some stuff here, so make sure you kind of go back and do your homework, and I think this is gonna be recorded and transcribed, so you can go back and look at it, but um, NFC payment options are really important. Uh, NFC is an acronym that stands for Near Field Communication. You've probably heard that by n the names of things like Apple Pay, Android Pay, Samsung Pay, those types of things, um, commonly referred to as like tapping, right? Um, so that's built in. Um, text to pay is a huge one. This one has been just incredibly popular. Um, I use this a lot. I love being able to get um, uh, payment links via text to so go ahead and pay. It's just so much easier. Um, email invoicing, uh, a virtual portal for keyed in payments. Again, something that only your team needs to touch. The guest doesn't have to do that. Um, we offer touch-free contactless terminals. Um, and also, as I mentioned before, a, a one-click very easy to implement online shopping cart. So there, there's a lot of stuff there. There's a lot to unpack. So again, definitely do your homework on those things. That's great. I can say I personally love text to pay as well. Um, it's awesome. Yeah. The next question is, how does that merchant pricing model work? And how does it save up to 40% a month? Yeah, no problem. Um, so if you, if you don't understand how... Um, the the cost of pro, um, uh, credit card processing works that is something you definitely want to get a handle on and we could literally spend an entire webinar just talking about that so i won't get into the details of that but i'll explain how our model works um, we pass on the direct cost of interchange interchange is what the card brands charge um, so those are visa mastercard discover and american express those are the four credit card brands if you hear of other types of credit cards they're all uh, some derivative of those uh, one of those four brands um, interchange is the fee that they pass on. There's nothing you can do about that. There's nothing we can do about that. That's just the cost of being able to accept those types of credit cards. So we pass that on. 
Um, however, where we're different is that we don't uh, we don't build a markup into that at all. So that's where the savings come in. So we pass on interchange, which again, no one can do anything about that. And then um, we're a subscription-based uh, service. So you pay us as little as uh, $79 a month, which is a special price for, for Buyer's Edge members. Um, $79 a month, and then that scales with your business. So as your business grows, as you accept more and more digital payments, um, that subscription gradually increases, but always at a rate that's commensurate with how your business is growing. So you're never going to um, you know, those savings that you get, you're always going to continue those on. You're never going to be paying more um, than you would be with other providers as a result. Great. Thank you for that. Um, we've got one more question here, and that's actually what is the process to get signed up with that merchant? Yeah, so um, best thing to do is uh, we'll get a link posted up here. I'm not sure if um, if you can do that. If not, I can probably do that. But we'll get a link posted up here, which is the easiest way to do that. Um, and then once you go into that link, just drop in a little bit of information and then you'll speak to one of our payment consultants. Um, we call them payment consultants because their, their primary job is to understand you and your business and kind of what your needs are. And then that way they can help craft a, a payment solution specific for your business. So we talked about a lot of different solutions today that might be good for you. Some might not be. Their job is to understand your business, understand your guests, and then say, hey, I think this is what would work best for you based on what you've told me. And here's how these things would work. And here's what those things would cost. So um, that's how you do it. Um, like I said before, we'll get that link posted up. And I'm sure that'll be included in uh, any of the follow up items that go out after this. Yes, um, I actually just put those in the chat feature and they absolutely will be in the follow up process. Awesome. Um, Ricky, thank you so much for sharing all of this knowledge and insight. It takes all of us to kind of partner together to navigate this new um, world for our operators. So we really appreciate having you here today and anyone that took the time to um, attend. And if anyone has um, we said had questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, to us and we'll put you in contact with Ricky and Fat Merchant if you're looking for life lessons about what he's gained from his children as we mentioned at the <laughs> beginning or just on Fat Merchant. We have a lot of new information to share. Um, so we'll be sending a follow-up email that includes this recording um, as well as some easy ways for you guys to get into contact with us if you want to get a little bit more information because there's a lot to digest here but we'll certainly make it easy for you. Um, so that's all we have for today, but again, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you.